Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. The name's Bond. James Bond. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family. Here's Johnny! Whoa, this is heavy. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Working on my day off. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Showtime with Roman podcast, the not-so-feature-length podcast that, well... Hasn't been around for two weeks because two weeks ago I really didn't have a guest and there wasn't too much coming out, so it was hard to create a show built around the release of the week. And then last week I I just got so busy with work. I had lots of hours to work last week, and so I didn't get a chance to record a podcast episode. But this week, this week is going to be a good week. Why? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about the Steve Trevor set photo. And then we're going to have a discussion about Suspiria, Dario Argento's Suspiria, because I watched that for the first time last week. And then we're going to preview The Incredibles 2. And this week I have on Mike Calkins. Did I pronounce it right? It's uh, it's Calkins. Calkins. So like cock for tile, right? Yes. Like, so, yes. Okay. Sweet. It's not spelt like that, but yeah. So yeah. Mike... No, trust me. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The other day, too, I, I've been... I must be... Something must be wrong with me because I used to be really good at spelling and like words and all that. And I finally found out that in my emails that work that I was sending to coworkers, I've been spelling hangers wrong. I've been spelling it like airplane hanger instead of like hanger for clothes. Oh. And all my life I've been spelling it as an airplane hanger. And now I just feel mentally defeated when I found <laughs> that out. Um, but how's life? How's it going? What you been up to? What are your What are your plans? What have you been watching? Uh, well. I've been mighty busy with my new job. Um, I'm a roofer. Um, so I've been really busy doing that pretty much all day. But uh, when I have gotten a chance to watch movies, I really haven't been watching like a lot. Uh, I'm very okay. upset about that, too. Because uh, I think the most recent movie I watched was uh, 12 Strong. Oof. And I don't hate it. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely... Uh, it exists. Um, yeah. And also, I watched for the first time House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, very nice. Which, um, historically, you know this, but they don't know this. I hate everything I've seen from Rob Zombie. Every single movie oh, every he's single, made, yeah. I hate. I actually yeah. like House of a Thousand Corpses. I thought it was pretty good. Um, wow. And but, you hate. Uh, Halloween 2 is that was the one that he did, right? Yes, Halloween 2. The Halloween remake, I don't hate the Halloween remake. Um, okay. But Halloween 2 is garbage, and Halloween. Uh, Rob Zombie's 31 is absolute trash. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you watch a lot of uh, smaller, obscure films um, than I do sometimes, and you definitely watch a lot of the more freaky, culty type of films, which I guess explains like your love for Suspiria so much because it's just right in your wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. and we're going to get to that later, obviously. But um, we haven't talked for a long time. Like, for a long time, like, and it's funny because No Man's Sky is not very good, but that was the first game <laughs> that we played together and chatted over for a long time, and then since then we've just been friends for so long yeah. um, and just chatted a lot. And we haven't talked a lot recently because our schedules just don't align and you're three hours ahead and it's just hard to find time to coordinate to you know when I'm playing video games when you're playing video games and but I'm glad to have you on. I really can't wait. Um, I'm just super happy to talk about Suspiria just to kind of unload all my thoughts because I did give a brief review on Letterboxd. Um, but before we get there, we're going to talk about this out-of-context shot that Patty Jenkins released for Wonder Woman 1984, which seems to be the official title for the film. Um, Wonder Woman 1984, perfectly fine title. Not much to really go on. It is what it's it is. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and then... So she releases two photos, two big photos today. It's one of Diana in front of a bunch of TVs, and it, it is a gorgeous shot. Oh, it, yeah. it is beautiful. I don't know if it's a shot from the film, but it is a beautiful image. Um, and Diana is just, or Gal Gadot is just stunning. Um, and then she releases the other photo of Chris Pine as Street Steve Trevor, and she says, Welcome back, Steve Trevor. Now, obviously, Wonder Woman, at the end of Wonder Woman, um, he dies in an explosion, sacrificing all of these like, what was it, gas? Uh, yeah, he was he was saving everybody from uh, from chemical warfare. 
Yeah, exactly. So um, he blows himself up in, in one of the most emotional and heartbreaking moments of any comic book movie I've ever seen. Uh, right. Chris Pine, a lot of people are like, he carries that movie. I disagree. I say that he's just a really strong anchor. Like He, he really helps. compliments uh, Gal Gadot very well. Because um, he's a great talent. He's my favorite Hollywood Chris. Um, and so she they, she releases this image, and people are freaking out. They're like, oh, my God, Wonder Woman's ruined. This whole, whole emotional stuff is ruined. Blah, blah, blah. And then MCU versus DCEU stuff happening. Aww. And then it's like, for me, as someone that loves... Like, I think the first two-thirds of Wonder Woman are straight-up masterpiece. And then the final act is... It's a little counterintuitive, and it, it just doesn't quite work on every level for me uh from a mechanical like a storytelling stand- standpoint um but his death or potentially his death is is so good it's so well executed and now it looks like he's back but we obviously i think there's only one option and one reason we see him there but what are your thoughts on steve trevor possibly returning or he is returning in wonder woman 1984 i love steve trevor in uh in wonder woman uh mm-hmm. i think that he's a crucial part to why that film works. I think if the dynamic between him and Diana doesn't work, that movie drops from maybe an, it, a nine to, to a good eight. Yeah. It, like that's, I'd probably that's say a, about a seven. Maybe I'm, I'm a little, I might be a little bit harsher than you, but think. maybe even that, but it's, it's a very crucial, crucial thing. And the, to know that someone did a good job as a character is to, at, when they die to both mm-hmm. feel like, God, I wish they didn't do that but also realize it's the best thing they could have done for the story. Precisely. And I was upset when he died, but I realized it was necessary. I mm-hmm. don't think he's back. Like, in like real. I have mm-hmm. a feeling that it's it's something with Diana that's in her head. Mm-hmm. Um, if she if he is back, then they're going to have to explain that away. But honestly, this, <laughs> this photo is completely out of context. We don't know what's going yeah. on. So yeah. it's, it's, you can't get mad about it if you don't know what's going on. So Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree. I think that, you know, a lot of people, they see set photos and they or, you know, images or stills from the film. And it, it's completely out of context. It's fine to, like, speculate and discuss, but to, like, just get overly angry or overly positive is... It, it's like, why? Like, you don't understand the context of the scenario, the story, uh, the premise, the plot. You, I mean, you really don't know anything. So it's like, oh, cool, that's a thing that exists. The one thing I will say is a lot of people are like, oh, why'd they have to reveal this in marketing? And I think it can go, one. on one hand, I'm like, okay, this was kind of a bad play by them because they could have made it a huge surprise. But on the other, it really built excitement. Now, what is everyone talking about today? Wonder Woman 1984. And a movie that's that is not coming out yet. Yeah, I know. And it's, and that's pretty big play by Patty Jenkins. She knows what she's doing. I trust her. And personally, I think it's just going to be, uh, kind of like what Joker was to Batman and Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah. Um, it's just, she's going to, cause even though they only knew each other for like about a week's amount of time, like, Probably. you know, that was Diana's like first experience with like, like a, a man male. outside a male. And so she kind of feels that connection and that, and that love for him and that admiration. And, um, their dynamic is so beautiful, and so I, uh, I'm i excited to see what they do. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that Circe, um, the villain, uh, could probably bring him back from the dead or like kind of just play with Diana's uh, psyche, uh, which is exciting to think about. But Cheetah's going to be the big villain in this film, and I definitely think it's going to be like a Cold War op. Level yeah. movie. It's gonna be like yeah. Black Ops in a way. It's, oh man, um, oh, I don't like to make. The, I don't want to make this comparison, but it's gonna be the Winter Soldier. Um, yeah, I think there's gonna be lots of Winter Soldier vibes too. But uh, I, I, I'm really excited for this. I'm excited to see why he's back. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I think that if they didn't release this, it would have got leaked anyways. Yeah, and that's and that's the other thing too because is... they're in a mall, like they're in a public place, <laughs> so like yeah. it's gonna get leaked. <laughs> yeah, and they released a bunch of images were taken today too because they're they're filming the film right now yeah. and they've already seen like I already saw like an article saying here's all the set photos from uh Wonder Woman 1984 and it's like just random like 140p photos and it's like <laughs> I'm so glad it was released in an HD image yeah, rather I, than I some Joe Schmo sitting on a balcony smoking a cigarette in a robe, you know. Like Well, it's like so, that's how we got the first uh, the first inklings of the Shazam costume when when uh when they were filming in that mall, they they people took um uh, from a distance they took pictures. And yeah. they still haven't really released a full body HD picture. Yeah. Um uh, that's not set photo. So, 
which is weird because I figured as soon as the first ones hit, hit online, they were going to throw something out, but they didn't. Um, but like in this day and age, you can't hide that shit. Yeah. So you might as well just exactly. get it out there exactly. for people to see because they're going to find out anyways. <laughs> Plus when the exactly. And, up, and you know, I thought it was just a good play by Patty. And I'm really, really excited for Wonder Woman 1984. I'm not too excited for Aquaman, but I'm pumped for Shazam okay. and I'm really pumped for Wonder Woman. So. I'm pumped for yeah. that Aquaman. Trailer I just, I have no excitement. I didn't care for his character for in Justice League at all. And so. we, obviously, it's. So, I haven't really seen Juan any of his movies, so it's reason. like, I don't really know if he's for me or not. So The good, the good thing about that, him is that he's got a good balance of action because he did that movie Death Sentence and Furious 7. His, whether you like the movie or not, I think he's, his yeah. technical <laughs> prowess in action scenes is actually pretty pretty commendable. And in The Conjuring, he's really good with, with horror and tension. And mixing that in an underwater world where you're going to run into like under, underwater sea monsters, is it's a good match. I, I want to see what happens. Yeah, I I think in that regard I'm excited because everyone because I've never seen The Conjuring and everyone's like you gotta see him you you would love them and the way they describe the way he shoots his movies me I would guarantee I would love those movies but I just can't oh, yeah. I can't bring myself to do it so yeah. um but that'll do it for that part of the show so now let's talk about one of your favorite films ever um and one of the best horror films ever made uh, last week. I decided to watch Suspiria for the first time, Dario Argento's 1977 horror film, and I was very nervous because it's so beloved, and I know that you love it, and I know all the time. The funny thing about us, Mike, is that a lot of the times you'll feel so positively about something, and I'll be like, eh. And then if I like something, you might be a little eh "Eh," on it. So it was was very weird trying to gauge how I was going to feel about the film. Um, Luckily, some very obscure uh, app... 2B TV had the film for free, and it's the only place I could watch it. It was it was uh, was HD, but the problem is that it wasn't like clearly defined crispy images like you would get on like a Blu-ray, because yeah. uh, it was streaming obviously, yeah, and I hate digital media uh, personally, um, unless it's Filmstruck or Netflix, I guess. But um, the film is utterly brilliant, and you know. When I was talking to Mikey about First Reformed on Sunday, I said, whenever I'm watching a movie that I'm already really enjoying, there's always one moment you can point to in the film where it's like, I went from liking this film to loving this film. Oh. Now, so the movie starts... Are we doing spoilers? And Oh, absolute, oh, Absolute spoilers. Okay. So, um, the movie starts, and she gets off the plane, and she's getting ready to... You know, the music's playing, and the theme music is just oh. in incredible i listened to that on the way to first reformed on sunday and i was getting just like anxious in the car it was one of the it's incredible i love the film from the second she walked through those doors out onto the rainy street i like i fell in love in an instant because of the music the way the music cut the way it was shot the, the doors opening and closing it was i was like this is it i'm gonna love this film the rest of the way and sure enough um i did I, I really just got engrossed in every single second of it. Um, a lot of people I understand would be like, oh, the acting is so cheesy and the dubbing and blah, blah, blah. As you said before I saw it, it just adds to like this heightened uh, horror. And, and it really just kind of makes things feel so much more supernatural. Um, you can definitely see a lot of inspiration uh, for Mulholland Drive, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive um, in that regard, because that movie, in at the very beginning of it anyways, is very Suspiria-esque. Um, in many, many ways, um, in terms of, like, character and character motivation and where the film begins. Um, but it, the way it's shot, the way it looks, the colors, the neon, everything. Jessica Harper is tremendous, and it is a great super, supernatural slasher fic, flick. And I know a lot of people uh, don't like the fact that it can't decide if it wants to be supernatural horror or a slasher horror, but they literally explain why there's slasher moments and they literally explain uh, all the supernatural stuff too. And that sequence with the, with the dog and the blind man is so terrifying. Oh yeah. Um, so good. But obviously you love the film and you've seen it well before I have. What are your thoughts on Suspiria? You see the way you described it, how you knew instantly as soon as she walked out those doors that you love mm-hmm. this movie. I fought with this movie until the last 12 minutes. Like, it was just like, I don't know if I like this. I really don't know if I like this yep. movie. Got to those last 12 minutes, and I balls out mm-hmm. loved it. 
And then I went back and rewatched it and loved it even more. Um, it, it's, a, it's a movie that benefits from rewatch because you notice so many other things going on in the background. And just when you're when you're watching it for the first time, you're really taken in by the, the, the visual direction, the, the color palette, just the visual language mm-hmm. of the film. But when you really take a step back after seeing it, you've let it wash over you and you've, you've gotten through it, you know what's going to happen. You can really start to notice the little details. And you can really notice all the inspirations that Argento mm-hmm. had. Like, there's so much Alice in Wonderland Oh, in absolutely. This. The, oh my god, there's so much. Oh, I love this movie <laughs> too much. Um, it's one of, it's actually, uh, this is a completely side point. It's one of the last films to be done in Technicolor. Yep. Um, they did this on purpose because it saturates color. Mm-hmm. So it really maximizes how vivid those colors mm-hmm. are. And, uh, oh man, it's just going through that opening scene when you, I told you this story. I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll tell the story again. Um, when I first watched the movie, I thought that I had a bad transfer or something because the doors opened, the music started, the doors closed, the music mm-hmm. stopped. Like I was that stupid. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I rewatched it and I did research on this film after I finished it. Um, and I was just like, wow, I can't believe I, I didn't understand what, what was going on in that scene at all. Um, when, as soon as she crosses into the street, she is leaving what you can perceive to be reality for that time being. Yep. She's entering the world of Suspiria. She's entering the, the world of witchcraft. And I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say this film doesn't know whether or not it wants to be a slasher or a... Uh, a supernatural film because because of that beginning because of how off kilter it throws you and how they visually depict that this is very otherworldly i think it's supernatural from the start and if you're just looking at it straightforward and not looking at all the all the the technical you know the cinematography and Mm -hmm. all the lighting you can look at it that way and be like oh well now witches just showed up at the end but if you really pay attention to that kind of stuff You start to notice the stuff in the forest. The forest looks so unreal. It looks it looks like Absolutely. a fairy tale. I know it's and the you know all the blood, like the blood looks almost unreal too. Yeah, like everything about it is just like the colors are maximized mm-hmm. to throw you off and draw you in at the same time. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. really hard for a movie to do that. And I I can't remember another film off the top of my head, but there have been a couple of films where I've been watching it and I'm like, this shouldn't work, but it does because of the person behind the camera is so, so good at their craft. And I haven't seen any of uh, Dario's other work, uh, but man, this movie just really just knocked my socks off and blew me away. And I've just, there have been images ingrained in my head for a while. That shot of her uh, that I have as my cover photo on Facebook now, like the most popular shot from the film, I guess, um, is is stunning. And then that shot of uh, her face being smashed up against the window. Oh my oh, god, so terrifying. good. Um, and even like just the the, uh, the eyes appearing outside. Oh, the so window. good. It, and then her like falling it's, into like ugh. it's not barbed wire, but all that wire is like it's so like imagine oh. being trapped in that scenario and the maggots on the ceiling. It is the the oh my god. The worst part about that scene is if you look at that scene. I've seen it because I watch video diaries on this movie because it's just so fucking yeah. interesting. But it, they, they show that scene out mm-hmm. of context. It looks so stupid. Like if you if you're not in that world, if you're not if you're not there from the beginning, if you're not watching it from the beginning, if you see that scene out of context, she just jumps into a, a pile of barbed mm-hmm. wire. The problem is, is that bet- before that they set up how relentless the evil that's chasing her is, and and, and I mean evil. I do not mean yeah. a person. I mean Precisely. evil. Um, and how the yellow the yellow represents safety. Mm-hmm. So the yellow in that scene, she's trying to get the safety, and this is the only way to get the safety. Because if you look at the rest of the scene, all the other options, they're all covered in color. Yep. And it's not yellow. Wow. I never it's, noticed oh, that. That's amazing. There's so there's so much they're telling you in the movie. It's it's crazy. Because if you actually look at the story, the story is not that not that complicated. It's, it's, oh, it's pretty simple. Basic. It's a simple giallo film. It's a simple supernatural giallo film. Um, and Giallo film is a murder mm-hmm. mystery, Italian murder mystery. Um, but what really makes this film so impactful and so, so mm-hmm. amazing is 
the technical craft, the visual storytelling rather than the actual bare Plot bones and, yeah, structure and everything. Yeah, it is. It is an amazing movie, and just you like talking more about like the color of it and like that scene specifically. Like it just makes me want to go back and just watch it again and watch it again. And I, you know, I really want to watch it with like my brother because he's a big horror fan. I want to watch it with other people, but they would hate it. I know they would hate it because it's it's very you know cheesy. And it's very hard to get into a movie like that. And yeah. um, but you know, it's it's just an incredible piece of work. I I literally loved every single second of that movie because I'm a big I'm a big music guy when it comes to movies, and um, the music in this oh is it, it, literally surreal. I would say that pr- probably top five score ever, and pr- on a personal list, probably top three. It is it is an extraordinary yeah. and exquisite and very haunting pieces of music, and it's so it different. is it feels. It just feels like it just really just catapults you into this very strange and uh, hyper reality. It is, it is, an, it's just a beautiful film. It and I want. I can't believe I can't believe I'm. I just okay. really want like a Blu-ray release, and I know that you've sent me like a couple links to, like where to get some or whatever. But it's like <laughs> I want like to make sure I just buy it with for like twenty five bucks, and I guarantee you they're gonna release it in honor of uh, their re- remake this I, year. Um, I and there is no doubt in my mind there's gonna be a 4K release, and I'm probably gonna buy it. A hundred percent, dude. I, I don't care how many times I, I own this movie twice already. <laughs> yeah, so, I. Uh, um, if if they drop it on but, 4K, I'm insta buying that because I don't care if it's oh, 40 yeah. bucks and it comes with like insane amount of special features. I want it just to like look at it in the most crisp and precise way possible because even though I did watch it in like good quality, it was like it was like a mixture of like 720. Ish, it was low 720s, 720p, right? But Oof. it, it it's still like I still got all the color. So I mean, I was still super into it, and I couldn't even imagine watching it on a higher resolution because it it's so 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 good. It changes it changes it it changes the yeah. game. Um, because I you know I got the uh, the uh, Synapse Films Blu-ray, the one I, the first mm-hmm. one I sent you. Um, and I just I I pre-ordered that as soon as I saw it came out, um, uh, because they said it was a 4K. Uh, scan from the camera negative. Mm. I'm like, y- you can't. Do yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm gonna buy yeah, I'm gonna this. Waste now. All my money but um, there. but one of the things I wanted to say about the score was um, I, I make a comp- This is a bad comparison. It's it's uh, this is gonna be weird. The Amazing Spider-Man okay. Two. Okay. <laughs> it uh. begins. Um, the the score in the background during the scenes with yeah. Electro. Where it's his like his like internal monologuing. Oh, yeah. Oof. That that's supposed to be like part of part of the film. It's not supposed to be part mm-hmm. of the score. It's supposed to be his internal logic. You're supposed to be listening to him speaking yeah. to himself. But... That's how I equate the Goblin score for the most part. Because if you take away like the main mm-hmm. theme is yeah. a theme, uh, but the rest of it, the shrieks, the oh, howls, the, oh the howls, oh I just get chills thinking about it. it. That's part of the film to me. That's part of the film that's happening. Yeah. That's actually yeah. happening. The, the actors can. Yeah, do it, it feels. It definitely feels diegetic in that way. And like, because like I said, like you said, man, as soon as as soon as she gets to like basically the, I guess we'll just call it the portal to the world's the world of witches. Like it just, you just feel like everyone can hear everything, and you feel like it is just this oh, aura of sound. Just oh, dude. You want to talk about more about more about that color palette, more about that cinematography. Yeah. In the scene where she goes to talk to the, to the director, the, mm-hmm. to that doctor or whatever, the, yeah. the psychiatrist, um, or I can't remember what his title is, but uh, Udo Kier speaking in an American accent, which is the thing that's thrown me off the most yeah. about this film, period. Uh, but he, when in that scene, you see that the, the colors are more muted; they're more normal, yep. representing mm-hmm. safety. That's oh, it's so <laughs> I love it. It's so good, yeah. and it's like it's like the the, the colors and the lighting is yeah. normal. Until some shit starts oh, going down, and you'll see the colors start to bleed in, and you'll you know like the sequences where they're where they're counting the footsteps oh, trying to figure out where so where the, the the teachers go. Yeah. Which, by the way, is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like that's such a brilliant concept, um, and, and it really shows these people aren't stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like smart people, they have intelligence, yeah. which is which is odd for horror films of this yeah. era. Um, so that oh, I and and um, Susan Banyan is one of the best. I don't even want to call her a final yeah. girl, 
because it's not really a slasher film it's a giallo yeah. film but she she is one of oh, i love susan yeah. banyan i love her i love jessica harper she's so yep. fucking good um but i want to talk about the last 12 minutes yeah. of this movie because i want to know if you had the same reaction okay. i had because when her friend i can't i don't know why i can't remember her name the one who the barbed wire girl yeah when she returns as when i watched this for the first time i audibly said oh fuck no 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 stop 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 no 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 we're not doing this we're not doing this stop 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 she pulls open the door she starts laughing and the blood starts pouring out like stop 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 no i'm done no no stop i can't do this i can't do this i started flipping my i just started flipping out that is was some of the most disturbing imagery i've ever seen and her on the oh, table yeah. is so disturbing. Yep. I love it. Yeah, I <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was the twelve minutes just really like cemented it in place and was like, yeah, this is one of the best movies I've seen all year and probably one of my favorite horror films because um, I believe it's in Juno when that line when they say uh, the the only thing more terrifying than the last twelve minutes of Suspiria is the first ninety two. Um, in the final twelve yeah. minutes is it is dynamite and it is. Is when she killing. does open and she comes into the room and she's like laughing. It is, it is amazing, incredible horror. It is beautiful. It is terrifying. It is you like you're like oh my god, like this is actually kind of creepy. Um, the worst part is is that nowadays that sequence, that would be you. You just hear the door open and a loud yeah. bang. It's all you'd hear. But Argento took his time with that sequence. She curled her hands around the door. The door opened pretty slowly. It wasn't. It wasn't instantaneous. Mm-hmm. There was mounting tension, things that just in most horror films doesn't exist yep. anymore, which is one of the worst parts about horror movies yep. nowadays. It's just it's seeing a horror movie from a different era that takes this much care in setting up its atmosphere is so refreshing, which is also a huge part of why yep. it's so good. <laughs> I completely agree, man. It is, it is incredible, and even like the. Even like the prosthetics on the witch at the end, um, oh, yeah. so good. Oh, that sequence, by the way, still hold up. when when they when they're uh, sleeping outside outside of the rooms because of the maggots. Oh my god, that is probably the most terrifying scene in the film, honestly. When it turns blood red, and then it's just breathing. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so, so good. It's so off kilter because the the sound design for it, it just it makes it almost makes it feel like like she's next to you, like it's it's scary. Um, and the best part, the cool thing about this is that you've seen one part of a trilogy. There's two more films, Inferno and Mother of Tears. I've seen Inferno. Inferno's pretty good. Haven't seen Mother of Tears, heard nothing but not good things. Interesting. But I do recommend you see Inferno, because Inferno's really good. Yeah. But it's the second part of it, because there's three mothers of the nice. Switch cover. Yeah, I'll have to uh, probably so. check those out, too. Um, but for now, I think I'm... Might just rewatch Suspiria again soon. It's dynamite, man. I'm oh, so happy I loved it. Um, it's a great movie. Um, I've never been more <laughs> scared yeah. of watching, of, of waiting for your response for a movie. Because I was like, if he hates this movie, yeah. Oh dear. Be... <laughs> yep, yep. And I, and we you know, like I like to, I like to like playfully joke around and give you shit. You know, like for the mummy. I give you, I give like I that's throw, a good example. I throw around and give you shit about Batman v Superman. So. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's all in good fun. But yeah, it's a great film. I'm just so happy I loved it. And I too. <laughs> um, can't wait for the remake, man. I, I think that Luca Guadagnino is really going to deliver something that it's just going to be a modern retelling. And people are like, oh, they, they sucked all the neon out of it and everything. And it's like, that's okay. Like, I feel like for me, if you're going to retell a story, and there's obviously already different visuals with like that gaping hole in her chest, which yeah. we're probably gonna see learn a little bit more about. And I think it's just a really solid, gonna be a really solid modern retelling of this story. And obviously, why would you want if you're gonna remake something? Why are you gonna just make the same movie that's already been made? At least I, like uh, put your own spin on it. Like if you look at a movie like Twelve Angry Men or like Psycho, like they're literally shot for shot remakes. And it's like, what's the point of that? I agree. And it's like, um, you know, I got me obviously a huge fan of the original. And I that trailer came out, and I was cautiously watching it because I'm like, I really hope this doesn't look bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was very encouraged by the fact that Luca Guadagnino made a point to explain that he's not telling the same story; he's telling his own version. He is yep. he is. This is a completely different story. 
it's going to have same, similar characters, similar beats, similar, uh, even a similar Premise. area. Like they're going to be in the, in the German, um, dance academy, but mm-hmm. this is his own version of the story. So basically when I go into this movie, I got to say Suspiria doesn't exist. This is a new film. This is a different film. And yep. that is the best part because I've seen so many remakes that just try to do what the originals do, and that's and then why they, they fail. fail. That's why they fail because yeah. they don't they aren't they aren't strong enough to stand alone as they, their own film. And I generally exactly. even with remakes and with sequels, I look at films by themselves in isolation. So you know, like with the Nightmare remake, I I forget about 1984, which is my favorite horror film of all time. Mm-hmm. I just I just don't think about that. On its own, does this movie work? Yeah, and that's what's important. No, it I doesn't. Think... <laughs> yeah, and it's like... I understand like people are obviously going to be upset if they're big fans of the film. And obviously, as someone that's a big fan of the film now, the first thing I said when I got done with watching Suspiria, I was like, okay, I already saw the, tra- I saw the trailer for Lucas already, and I was like, okay, I'm excited. I, I, show me what you've got. Um, and you know me, I don't really watch too many horror films. I'm probably never going to see Hereditary just because I'm a baby. But Suspiria is something that looks to be right in my wheelhouse. And I like the way it's shot, like it just feels so much more dense and dark and eerie. And I feel like he is going to deliver something. And what, what's important is that I can already see the reviews coming out. And it's like, oh, it misses the point of the original. And right. it's like, it's not setting out I'm, to I mean, do, redo the point. It, it's creating a new point by introducing something a little bit different, some new cinematic language, some new visuals, some new uh, camera angles and everything. And it's like That's the thing, because a lot of people, the, one of the biggest criticisms I've seen is, where's the color? And, I, and I've, even said, I've even said, I'm like, wow, it, it just doesn't have the color that the, that the original does. But you can even see from the trailer that Luca Guadagnino's cine, the cinematography, his shot selection, the way that, that he's choosing to to shoot this film mm-hmm. that is his visual language the way that he's shooting it is so different from the original it's he's doing it his own way and he's there's enough visual storytelling in the shots he's presented yep. in his teaser trailer that i can't help but be like okay there's no color but he's probably yep. not going to need exactly. it exactly because because if he combines his, the cinematography that they're using for this film and they combine that with a dope musical score which we got a very small glimpse at in that trailer and that score is dope. So if he can combine those two things, he can, it, it's not going to matter. There's, no, there's not as much color in it. So whatever. If it's a good movie, yep. it's a good movie. That's exactly. It doesn't need to redo the original. It doesn't need to... <sighs> People are very weird. But yeah, it, I'm excited. I'm really pumped. And I think he's going to deliver something special. Um, so that's I, it for the Suspiria part of the show. Uh, we spent like almost 20 minutes um, on that. And rightfully so. It is... Uh, great film that everyone should see check it out on 2b tv um there are unfortunately ads while watching it um but honestly like it's the experience holds the same um but um so now we're going to move on into the big last big segment of the show we're going to preview the incredibles 2 uh which comes out tomorrow tomorrow night at 6 5 p.m i'm going with my family gonna be a big trip i'm pumped it's my birthday weekend uh they always release a pixar film uh, around my birthday, so it's always pump exciting to get to watch one of my favorite uh, studios, studios' new film. Um, and Incredibles 2 looks great. It's getting really great reviews. And as someone, it must have been, I think, almost 10 years before I've seen The Incredibles in full. And I rewatched it last week, and I don't know why I had the thoughts that I did on that film. That movie on a storytelling level, is probably Pixar's best. Um, it, it The way that it just seamlessly integrates these themes between every single character, they just run a strand um, through each of them. And, and the strands, and, and the way that they do it, almost kind of looks like a family tree, because you've got each big character, and then you've got these different th- themes stranding through them, and then, fun- and then like coming together at like an intersection, and then, then they... Uh, it just, to me, it is just a dynamite experience it's an ode to 1950s spy dramas a la james bond it is got it's probably michael giacchino's best score uh, and probably pixar's best score in general it is incredible and then just all the character work the villain syndrome is a great villain um one of our good friends on the movie talk page uh nolan dean did a great video essay on syndrome and how he kind of represents like toxic fandom and honestly it is it is an incredible film pun intended and 
I'm really pumped for tomorrow. So what are your thoughts on The Incredibles? Are you excited for Incredibles 2? What are you expecting? What do you think you're going to get out of it? I have to say I have not seen The Incredibles in so long. Mm -hmm. Like a a disgusting amount of time. (laughs) Um, But I just, I know, I've been waiting for this movie for 14 years. Yep. I've wanted this movie for so long. And every time they announce a new movie, yeah, I'm sitting there like, okay, that's cool, but where's where's Incredibles 2? Yeah. Like, you would have thought but, they would have released this thing five years ago when superhero movies well. were literally peaking. And they're still kind of peaking now, but it's like five years ago would have been, I think, the perfect time. But, it, I mean, it's weird I'm just glad like, we're getting it tomorrow. It's a, movie, it's a movie that did well. Yep. Like, the, the original one did well, and it took them this long to make another one. Yeah. It, it's like, there, we should already have three of these by now. For Almost sake. four. We should probably be in, yeah. in the process of a fourth, if anything. Yeah. It's re- it's weird. It's so eerie that it took this long. Yeah. And you know, like I haven't seen the movie in a while. I actually downloaded it on my iPad for while I'm on my way up to uh, the Cape for my vacation tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm going to watch it on the way because I'm not going to get to see it until probably Tuesday. Okay. Monday or Tuesday. Um. I'm I'm beyond excited for this. I actually skipped all the trailers, almost all the trailers for this. The, uh, the only reason I saw yeah. a trailer for it is because it premiered in front of a movie I saw. <laughs> um, I just didn't want to know anything. I I wanted to know nothing. Yeah. Um, and you know, here we are. Uh, and I've seen the trailer, and I'm super duper excited. Um, one of my only concerns was that it almost seemed like in the trailer that a, a certain degree of this movie is is repeating uh, certain aspects of the first film. But all of the reactions I've been hearing are all universally astounding. So yeah, um, my biggest worry <laughs> is what you kind of just mentioned is I'm afraid that it's just going to be the first film reversed um, in terms of like plot and motivation and everything. Yeah. Um, and the big takeaway so far is that Jack Jack steals the show, and then the action and the score is great, and the characters are great again. It's good to get back because it takes place literally right where the first film ended. Um, and then they're probably going to do like a couple month yeah. time jump um, right after that. But I don't know if you remember this, but they actually created an Incredibles 2 Rise of the Underminer video game for PS2. Um, and me and Tyler yeah. and my brother Roger had played that. I remember we rented it from Blockbuster. And uh, my friend Tyler was over for the weekend Oof. and we played that and that was a blast and it was cool to like be like, oh, I guess this is doable even though we're probably never going to get a second film. And now... Um, it, we're getting it tomorrow, and I do still have those worries because Pixar recently. I liked Finding Dory a lot when I first saw it, but now it's like okay. I love Hank um, as a character. Cars three was fine. It was my favorite of the three films. Yeah, which isn't saying much at all. I loved Coco. Coco is an exquisite, extraordinary, amazing film. I want to treat Coco yourself. So You'll cry bad. a lot. Um, <laughs> I, so, I like crying. You know, I like crying. Um, and then. I think what we're going to get tomorrow is going to be a very um, exciting film. I'm excited to see the action. There's a shot in one of the trailers where Dash is like running through like a bunch of like portals or something. And then uh, I heard that Dash is a great character in the film too. Like he just gets a lot more to do. And a lot of people say that he's one of the best characters and that um, I just love all the voice performances. I think every single person they casted, even when you look at the teacher that they uh, cast the voice for, um, when he's like, don't you Bernie me. <laughs> and he's like, coincidence? I think not. And it's the, not. all of the voice performances yeah. are exceptional. Even uh, uh, Bob Parr's boss, the little midget guy. Just every single oh, character yeah. is perfectly cast. Um, and I'm very excited to get uh, new characters. I'm excited to hopefully get a little more Frozone because he's one of my favorite parts of the first film. Um I'm afraid they might be a little oh, over- yeah. overdoing it already and a little meta with the whole, like, wife thing. Um, yeah, um, which is suit? great. It's, it's fine. I get yeah. it. But um, honestly, man, still, oh, absolutely. still a meme. Absolutely. <laughs> still I'm just pumped meme. that I get to see it with my family because the movie is all about family, and that's what what a lot of Pixar films are about. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm just so excited to get to experience this with my siblings and my parents. Like, my dad and mom love the first Incredibles, and I think as, um, as I've grown grown older um like i said i didn't really like it for so long i I thought it was okay anyways i never thought it was bad um but as i've grown older like the themes just resonate more and you just see more and you notice more and i just love the setting like it's just like this 1950s like modern mix and spin it reminds me of it follows in a way where it follows has like 
this weird like 1980s like setting but with like a modern yeah carpenter esque it is honestly I'm so pumped for tomorrow I I, I really can't wait the the most impressive thing to me nowadays um when I when I look at the Incredibles you know I haven't seen it in a while but I, you know my recollection of it and, and thinking back on all the sequences I still remember you know like the the most impressive thing about the Incredibles is that while yes it's a fun superhero action film for children Mm -hmm. there's so much in there for adults as far as as talking about midlife crises and and their their feeling of of um hopelessness as far as being useless Mm -hmm. in the world like there's so much in the incredibles and i can't wait to see what they do with incredibles too as far as what the thematic potential for that film is i have a feeling that they're gonna bang that one right out of the park again yeah there's so much to talk about yep and brad bird is like a talented dude yeah, it's crazy because it's like we get we get all these superhero films. Yep. You know, like we we get them every year. We get at least like five of them. Well, you're getting like six or seven now. We got Venom. Six. We're getting uh, Aquaman still. It's yeah, like don't, don't, don't talk about. It. Let's not talk oh, okay. about. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the uh, hey, we man. get all these superhero films. Yeah. Very rarely are they about so, anything. Nowadays, um, and and that's that's why I, the, the the Incredibles is a gem of a bygone era that we yep. will hopefully see again because you'll, you'll get every once in a while, you'll mm-hmm. get a winter soldier yep. or something or a Logan where value where there's actual and resonance thematic. and yeah, there's stuff to talk about. Um, but the, and the Incredibles is no different. I'm hoping mm-hmm. Incredibles two is the same way yeah. because yeah, why exactly. Wouldn't it why, why wouldn't it be? There's, there's stuff to talk about. I mean, I don't think they're going to, but, you could talk mm-hmm. about gender roles in this movie. You could talk about you know because like, they're reversing you. Like you could be like, oh well, between um, Elastigirl Girl and Mister Incredible, there's the whole like, oh well, he, in the first movie he yeah. was providing for the family, whatever. He was going over there to provide. Yep. Now she's doing it, and it's it. it you there's stuff to play on there. I don't know yeah. if they're gonna play on that specifically, oh, yeah. but there is stuff to play. Absolutely, on. I'm it's pumped, man. I'm I'm really excited. So, um. Well, that'll do it for our Incredibles 2 preview today. Um, And we have one more tiny segment before we go. Uh, But the ABCs of movies. I've been dying to have you play this game. Um, So, obviously, if you've listened before, you have one minute uh, to go from A to Z. uh, And you have to give me a title of a movie for each letter of the alphabet. Alphabet, excuse me. Um, now, a couple oh, rules, because all games come with rules. One, have fun, because having fun is fun, but also be competitive, because you want to be the best. Um, but if a movie starts with, like, The Greatest Showman, for example, it only qualifies for T and not G. Um, uh, oh, T, so yeah, exactly. So it's not going to count for G, it's going to count for T. Um, I give a, Sometimes I'll give a little bit of a pass because this game isn't that serious. It's not the end of the world. Um, but at the same time, let's have some fun. If you say a franchise film, obviously you're a big Harry Potter fan. If it comes to H and you say Harry Potter, you have to give me a title of one of the Harry Potter films, or Lord of the Rings, or Indiana Jones, yeah. or whatever. So, um, Well, I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Take a breather. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> oh, the pressure. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. And then I'll count down from five, and then I'll, once I say go, I start the one-minute timer. Uh, the record that. is 15, held by Mikey and I. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Arrival. Why can't I think of B? Baby Driver. Um, C. Oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Oh, no. The, the, the pressure is setting in. Cloud Atlas. Uh, D, D, D. Drive. E. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. What what are you doing to me? <laughs> oh, no. This should Not be easy. This should be easy. Oh, no. Fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna lose this. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, 15 seconds. E, E, what the fuck? E, E, what the fuck? E, E, what the fuck? Ella Enchanted. Okay. 
uh, F, uh, Fast and Fear, the Fast and the Fe- oh no, that's T, uh, Fast Five, uh, G. Time. Fuck, that was bad. Okay, well, it's okay. You got six. Um, I'm sure I'll have you on again, so you can always try again. E, End of Watch would have been good. It's one of my favorite uh, movies ever made. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Evil Dead, Ex Machina, um, Fuck. Ella Enchanted, Deep Cut, good one. Um, uh, first I was gonna go Enchanted, but I'm like Ella Enchanted's better. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you for playing. Um, I'm just really happy I finally got you on. Obviously, you had something come up at the beginning of, uh, or like around like May, so I couldn't yeah. have you on. But I'm glad I got you on for Incredibles 2. Really fun chatting with you. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me uh, in a lot of places. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, I kind of sort of nerd. Okay. You can find me on YouTube at I kind of sort of nerd. Uh, although you will not see much of me on there. Um, <laughs> you can see me writing at uh, geeksandgamers.com. Uh, you can see find me on Instagram at I kind of sort of nerd. And yeah, I mean, pretty much everything's I kind of sort of nerd. So on most of those platforms, <laughs> just yeah, search that. Yep. <laughs> Definitely follow him on Star, Stardust. That's You're too. on Stardust like yes, um, every single time. Although I think, um, I think I'm not under that name on Stardust. I think I'm just Michael R. Hawkins. Okay. Well, that'll do it for today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. The show went uh, as long as I expected it to, which is great. We got to talk about awesome uh, movies. We got to talk about a movie that I'm very excited to see tomorrow. And we got to talk about a very interesting set photo, that, which is sure to cause debate and discussion for the next couple months uh, regarding the DCEU and uh, what the hell are they doing? Um, but, um, that'll do it. Once again, um, I'm working on my Black Panther video editorial right now. It's more of like a villain editorial, but I'm using Killmonger as an example, and I can't wait to explain why I'm using him as the example in the video. Um, I'm still working on the outline of the script, and it should be done early July in time for Ant-Man and the Wasp. time for my birthday. Um, yes, happy birthday. Um, my gift to you is going to be a pretty dynamite video editorial, hopefully. Um, and then... What else am I working on? Not too much. I'm still writing reviews for Shifter Magazine. I think I'm going to try and get the Jurassic World review uh, up for them next week. Oh, your clickbait and, reviews. Um, back to those yep, days. all my clickbait headlines. I do it for the clicks, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, and you can find me on social media at Showtime uh, with Roman on YouTube. And you can see find my reviews on Facebook at Roman's Movie Reviews. Follow me on Letterboxd at Roman RBC. And have a wonderful, magnificent, and extraordinary rest of your day. And keep on watching movies.